I will actually kind of relieve you very much on the topic of, of are you just this group doing this? Because you definitely aren't. And Helsinki University is definitely more when you think in openness. But first, I want to go a little bit through my background that you understand why a space advisor, which is meaning pretty much I am an alien, at least in this respect. So what have I done? So mostly I have worked for the Finnish Meteorological Institute because I studied at Helsinki University uh, meteorology. And so I'm a weather forecasting, going through then service development, so programming stuff, and doing all kinds of services, the systems that you need for it. So it's, I also studied computer science. So in essence, I have taken the path of growing with the internet because I started in 92. So pretty much from then on, internet revolution has come. But what I do nowadays is, is EU research policy lobbying pretty much. So I'm a Finnish representative in these EU program committees that decide what is the next let's say EU Horizon 2020 call and what the text is there. So I'm quite far away from the internet now. No, no. But, uh, and then I have, uh, also take part in these European Research Infrastructure Consortia buildings. Well, not at the moment, but I was there to help ICOS, so the Integrated Carbon Observing System, or Euro Argo, where Finland is a member, to kind of establish their organization and, and become something. Yeah, that's not important, the last one. Ah, I was too fast. But maybe you saw a penguin, and now you know why I'm saying that you are not alone. Because 25 years ago, Helsinki University, let's say, helped the biggest accelerator of openness in the whole world, Linus Torvalds. And Linux is the reason why openness has ruled over the world now. Because if, if someone wouldn't have done that trick, and I have a mistake here. I'm very sorry, it's 25 years and I just wrote 20 because I couldn't think so long back. I was there sometimes when Linux was released, the, the real kind of version 1.0, and that was 20 years ago, so that's why I was, but of course he already before that had to develop and research into how an operating system is being done. But at the moment, 96% of all the web uh, servers, so the internet infrastructure, is open source Linux operating system based. The Apache web server that everybody is using, all of that is open source software. And it's free and open source software. I think that's maybe the point that when you think about open science, think a little bit about the free aspect as well. That, that there, there sometimes is this kind of when people just talk about open, then they totally accept, yeah, but someone can take some money in between, and then that's actually a barrier which does not make everything flow as it should. But Linux can to tell you the very simple story of why sharing what you do with others and doing it in a collaborative manner is the way that brings best quality products and it's much faster than anything that's commercially being tried to do. That's why Linux has won. And that's why 69% of your mobile phones, so I don't know how many have Androids, but maybe you can wave your hand and then we can see that it's, it's also in this room when we have something like Windows phones in Finland. <laughs> Horrible. That, that, that is actually still the point that these systems have kind of won over in the world as this is the way how we get to the best results. So research can just do the same. And that's why I'm here to, to help you in, in the motivation for open science. Because uh, I think there is clear that when you have common utilities that you build together, that everybody can use to get to results, that there is a mechanism and a process in the world that, that you can do sharing. And it does not mean that you can't do business afterward and you can't get rewards and fame and everything. Even if Linus Torvalds is maybe a very bad person about fame because he hates that. He doesn't want to have it, so he even didn't want to call his operating system Linux. He wanted to call it freaks. <laughs> but just an anecdote. So. But here, as, thank you very much, Tuli already addressed much better and more detailed some of the challenges that we have in, in the openness things. And I think uh, rewards or merits is the thing which probably is the biggest thing where someone is kind of like not easily just saying, yeah, let's do it. 
so that everybody understands so well nowadays that what is the value and how do I then get paid or kind of like fame from it. Uh, and this, of course, translates nowadays very much into funding. So as my job is like research funding, uh, lobbying, uh, I do understand that the systems are done in a way that now someone has to show that I was so great, that's why I get money more, and not the system that I work so well together, that that's why I get fin uh, funded. So there's a small jump to be done there. But I think uh, that there is so much areas that you can see that this is something that is not my end result, that, that what I try to do with data, because I think most of this revolution about open science has to do with open data. That, that, that that's the practical aspect of how you get into openness in, in, in science, is actually to start with the openness of data. And then when you work around this data from many different actors, then you will find that there are so many things that are not what my results are about, but this is just the technical ways to get somewhere. And that's why these areas we can totally do together. And data anyway is much more useful when it's kind of like uh, in the same way treated in many places. But of course, the merit system, and I think there it is that data production, you could see, is one step in the line of how to do science. And that data production doesn't get fame. That doesn't get merit in the same way as doing this kind of analysis step. Like I try to divide pretty much that you could put research in a very broad sense. This, this is about getting data done, and then it's analysis of data and writing about that, getting the kind of like publishing from it. And free and open uh, uh, source uh, software tools and the internet technologies, I think the way that, because they are the example, as I'm trying to say here, that 25 years ago it already started, it is already there, you just have to understand and, and kind of like embrace this principle and the system and then apply it to more areas. And this will get there. But data is also, I think, the area of where you, as the digital humanities, I think, already gave the example that when it is first difficult, everybody thinks that this is my data and I, I'm just kind of like, this is how I do my results. But I think when handling data, and putting it onto kind of like into digital form and making it kind of like fit for analyzing, because that's I think the 80% like uh, time spent in making the data useful. That process is not research results, but that's necessary for everybody. So of course the tools, the principle, like the methods how you do it and the tools for doing that are I think areas that everybody in the same research topic should see that, okay, I don't need to do this alone, I can do this with others. And maybe even kind of like find the special persons for this because I do see that this is about like IT people or, or programmers pretty much to be involved in other areas research. So maybe it's sometimes that you need also to bring the teams from different kind of know-how together. But that's how I think the data put that together as, as the main point, because then you can talk about how the data is collected in the same way, that it has the same kind of like um, structures, that it can be kind of automatically uh, analyzed. Quality control, those are things that I think many times have, for example, for the research infrastructure consortium that I've worked for, that these are the reasons why these people in Europe for those uh, consortia have, have come together because they understand that we all did collect something of the same, but we are not so sure if ours is actually so good. Can we compare how you do this? And from there, I think the point came that, yeah, it's good to do these methods, the processes, how we want to work, common. And then from there, it is also one thing, I think, mm, that nowadays will be important. When you see the data gets more kind of like important for research as, as its own in a principle set, then you also understand that research funding and applying for funding has been many times just thinking about, okay, how many of our, us people are working, and how many hours do we need about it? And they ref definitely didn't think about and the data costs in a way, because it's still technical work, it's systems, all those, 
please remember put something like 30% more into your applications for uh, EU funding, for example, because we get Finland is as active, as successful in principle, but we get less money than many of the other EU countries. So somewhere we are not ca calculating in the right way. So I think this is, might be one of the areas that we are not so aware of what infrastructure we are actually depending on. And that cost should better be realized. Put it in. And I think the merit system being a key factor, like track when you are ready and put out the data that for, for others to look at, track the usage of it. So try to find out who did take it, are they happy with it, what did they do with it, and, and from this you will find out uh, more research topics probably, and you will also find a lot of um, kind of the reasoning that you can give you to your financials that, hey, because we find out about this, now we need money. And I think that that will get understanding, and from there it goes on. Now, this was pretty much my general open science things, and to make it more concrete, the Finnish Metallurgical Institute is, is one huge data producer, and it's all open now for all the things that we have had the kind of time to do it. There's still a lot of, and a lot of research data, which we haven't been able to put out, but because we know how this goes, I try to share this with you that you understand that it is quite a task to put data openly available to others. We are in Finland very, very good since 2013 in the fact that the, the Finnish government decided then that all the, let's say, publicly funded, let's say, data production has to be available to everybody. And they also understood a very important thing that the dissemination systems, they need some money to be built up. They also need some money to actually be run. And I think Finland is, from the European countries at least, the only one which has clearly made this, that they, they have recompensated for all the research institutes of the government, that you get the money that you were losing now that you don't sell it anymore. Because for a long time, Finnish Met Institute was principally ready. Yeah, we can open up our data, but we are earning something like, not even a million or something like very small fish compared to the whole budget of the Finnish Met Institute for selling out the data. But because even losing a million is still making kind of some adjustments in what you can do, we always said that we can't do it unless you give us that money in, in the budget so that we can still keep on the same data production. So that finally happened in 2013, and that's the reason why, why we have it. Um, yeah, but this is just examples. So we have weather observations, also from the uh, marine areas. Uh, we have, yeah, long time data series to the, to the past, many times not before 1959, because those are still in, in paper formats or something not digital, um, but also the models, both from the sea and from weather. Lots of data out there, something special for air quality and road weather observations for someone else. So Livi is the Ligene um, Virasto. But it all is about that you need metadata, you need the models, uh, how the data uh, has to be kind of like built up for the thing and services. Inspire was actually the, the, the kind of EU directive you were respond uh, that Tuli was telling about. But what I think is important, and you should think about this, that it is totally fine that even if you give data freely and easily for everyone, make them register so that you can track what is it that people are taking and, and, and see how much what is used where. Because those are exactly the ones where you can motivate them, the, the funders, the donors for your system. And then, as you can't just for weather data, you can't just let someone run everything from your machines pretty much, because when the data is there uh, so that you can visualize it and, and even kind of make it a bit beautiful picture, someone else might do their web service by using your infrastructure. So we have some, uh, let's say, uh, so that everybody can get every data set per day from here, but it can't be used. But this is what you get to. So only three years of experience, we have now almost 12,000 registered users. They take data like five, four, <laughs> half a million times a day. So that means the second we get five requests. Of course, 
we are in the kind of near real time interesting data stuff. But from there, we also have found out that there is always this kind of like serious established organizations who have IT people and, and lots of, and they are ready to, let's say, get this data in very difficult formats as we have special formats for big data files. Uh, they are ready to do that. But when it comes to, let's say, the big group of, let's say, internet technology know-how, there we need something which is like a JavaScript object application uh, interface. We have therefore made a library, so on the internet with J JavaScript to be able to do it. So we are also on GitHub, FMI dev, check this out. Also, the this is just what we do this from. So the server, as we have been using so much open source software for free, we are now finally also having our documentation let's say, prepared good enough that this SmartMed server, which is doing all that data giving, that we will, by the, in this quarter actually, so very soon, we will publish it in open source. And an MIT license is something which pretty much lets everybody use it, even commercial people. But I want to do this because I think this is my main statement here. So how could you see open science as a vision? I think that makes it much more practical and concrete. So think about how Wikipedia is being done. And then think about, can you do your science like Wikipedia? Like everybody can kind of like just write there and put something on the same article pretty much. And, and all the people who are in this field doing something, read and interact with this text, change it, put in their own results and form a publication which is not just some team with a few people maybe putting some others to comment, but it's actually something totally collaboratively done. And this means that the data should be freely available and accessible for everyone. The scripts or all the programming, the modeling that's involved should be also that people can take it and run it themselves. And it means that all of that you can access over the internet. So I think internet technology is a very basic, let's say, platform from where you start. And uh, sharing the fame would not then be even technically difficult. It's not that hard to see everybody who contributed, everybody who commented, even everybody who read it, if you have these registration systems on there. All of that could be just put together that this research result has so much kind of been checked. And I think that should be a kind of like merit system part. How much has this been checked by others makes it a bigger, and more important result. Yeah. But for this vision, I think we need to get a little forward. We are not totally away from this path, but I think that um, for governments, it's quite clear that they should quite clearly be able to say that what are the data that the public and, uh, is so interested in that that needs a kind of continuous long-term funding system and uh, to be the base of what people can use in sense of data, both for research, but especially I think for just normal life. Um, and there is then kind of the, the thing that private entities will also uh, want to do, of course, something. And university, I think, and science institutes are also private entities in this case. That how, how could their interests be also included in an open way? And, and, and even commercial interests. But I think this is, there are some mechanisms for this. But in principle for the, for the public research funding system, which anyway in Finland I think is, the, like, almost all of the research funding still is, is from the public. It means that we are most, must be even more clear that we have this data production, modeling, and getting new data for others to kind of analyze. That should be separated into its own kind of funding system, which has a longer period of funding, which has a clearer kind of like goal, which is not to answer to some kind of like question. It's more that the, the, the information we need for doing this. And then the type of system that we have now could be even on the shorter term and, and less kind of less of the planning and writing long proposals and then not get it but uh, a kind of smaller questions, shorter time frames, and, and just getting the answers. Yeah, but this is, I think, 
due to think about how does the open sci science kind of approach conquer the world like Linux did our mobile phones. So that's it. Thanks. And of course, you can get my slides on SlideShare. So this is just how you can start. Thank you. Questions? Comments? OK. OK, two. Thank you. Uh, thank you for excellent speeches. Uh, uh, I think maybe you can all answer to this question if if uh, you would like to do so. But my, my question was inspired by Mikko's presentation in which I think he mentioned that simple guidelines for researchers would be really good. Uh, could you uh, elaborate somehow what kind of guidelines and and secondly, uh, at what point of uh, research process or or research education should these guidelines be be communicated? Maybe I can quickly answer. As I'm standing here, and someone brings the microphone to the other Mikko because I think he should answer as well. Uh, but it, oh, well, let let me first say, and maybe it's good enough. But I would say that just. Be bold enough to just go out and tell what you're doing. I would say that most of the researchers that are, for example, at the Finnish Met Institute, very successful, are the ones who are ready to tell about them in social media, go to more TV interviews, and, and those are the more successful ones. So making like your work, let's say, known in the world, just we are normal ways of social media nowadays is so much also helping those people to be more attractive for financing that in essence I think the first step is just don't be shy to tell what you're doing and of course that is like, like you have to also maybe some which you think that this is the secret ingredients for my success that maybe that needs to be shown but I don't think that that showing that in the world where so many are doing so many things nowadays that it will not be immediately just copied. And if someone copies it, maybe it's a Chinese and he does it in China or her. So it doesn't matter. You could still be famous for it in Finland and you st could still get funded for life for this. So I think this start out and just share. I, 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 is this on? It should be, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Okay, yeah. So uh, I, I think, I mean, this is very, very good. Good that you brought it up, and uh, I, I just kind of threw it out there. I should have elaborated a bit more. Uh, what, I, what I mean is that, well, I've been thinking about because I, I was talking on Wednesday with for people from law, and uh, so we would need legal and and sort of ethical advice. For example, I think University of Uvascula has, has very good instructions about green open access and, 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 and such things. So, for example, researchers don't, if you tell them that, okay, you can do uh, preprints and, and you can put them so available, people just don't simply know about that. And, and then if you tell them, then they are, okay, well, sounds very suspicious, I don't trust you, I'm, uh, you you're, you're kind of idealist. I mean, there's surely some kind of problems that will follow. Uh, so, so if you have like a, some authoritative uh, institution that says that you can do this, don't worry about it, or you should do this. Uh, that would be very useful in different respects. And what I'm especially thinking is the, the question of raw data. Uh, for example, if we, we have a lot of, in Finland, Finland is full of different memory organizations and others that have very valuable data. Now it's thinking about the humanities point of view. So, so they have a lot of valuable uh, data and that should be shared. And they don't necessarily, I mean, it is very important that we don't break laws about privacy or copyright. I, 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 that, that is extremely important. But then there's a lot of data, data sets that wouldn't really, I mean, these wouldn't apply. So people are still very worrisome how to do it, and then, then they think that, okay, we need to get a lawyer, we have to do this, and we have to do that. So if there would be like a simple guideline saying that this is what you can do, 
that would be very useful. For example, I mean, uh, I'm I try to facilitate my my job is to do all kinds of things with digital resources. Uh, so I try to facilitate. I'm not studying the social media myself, but for example, different data sets. There's the Suomi. Kaksikutnelia that has been opened is a very good case, but there's also other data sets. So I'm I'm discussing with one person who has has a discussion forum that includes 50,000 uh, users and more than 10 million messages. He'd like to open it and give it to the researchers and bring it to the university. And I, I think he's not the only one, but but so that I mean, if it's always one some big entity like National Library or Finclarin or somebody like that that is negotiating these things, things could also go from the other side. So there's the researchers who go and ask, uh, can we have the data? And then they would have guidelines how they can bring that data also for others to use and, and, and what can be opened and what can't be opened. So, so very clear saying that, that this is allowed and that is not allowed. And also then taking maybe already now the 2018, the when the the law about text and data mining in Europe will change so that everybody gets ready for that so that it's then immediately implemented here and we're not thinking that, okay, well, yeah, the European law says that those guys are allowed to do research, but I'm not sure if that's okay in Finland. So, 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 so that we don't, these bottlenecks, they, they have to go. And, and that's where we have to work together. And, and their simple guidelines on all of these aspects would be for us very useful.